So the stuff that they took off that hasn't been replaced, we're going to go ahead and replace it right, or not replace it, but uh, put it back on while we're doing it. Uh, let me go ahead and grab a ratchet before somebody's going to get their finger pinched. Sometimes you just got to loosen stuff up. So that one is not only, that bracket is not on the engine. I could go ahead and wait till later, but I'm opting to do it now. Let me pause you up and bolt it on there. We got these brackets right here. So you got a motor mount, you got your starter, you got these plugs up here. I just unplugged the crankshaft position sensor. Uh, we've got the plug right over here. We got the intake bracket to take off. Uh, all these bolts up along that. I can't get a camera in there while I'm doing it. So you've seen it. That should be good enough. Now I'm gonna go to work. All right, when you're pulling out the starter, one bolt is a standard bolt, the other one is a specialty bolt, do not lose that. That one sits on the back, it actually comes all the way out the back, so you can actually get to it, or you wouldn't be able to get to it, but this is a specialty bolt, don't lose it, don't break it. Make sure that you have it to go back in with it. Just like every other starter in this world, you got to plug in over here on top and that one is on top as well you know where you're actually hooking your battery cable let's see I'm trying to look that's a reman starter so it done went through a starter so that gets these wires here and we could get to one one 10 millimeter bolt up there and we can get the uh, um, knock sensor unplugged which is right there you look I mean you're looking right at it you know we, we see all that and uh, basically to give ourselves the room now we're gonna go ahead and go topside pull the intake uh, I'm gonna do that before I break all the flex plate bolts loose so we're gonna go topside and take the intake off anyway there is nothing more that I'm concerned about right at this at this particular time no, it doesn't look like it, so up top we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I tried and I failed. I'll explain this in a minute. This one is too long. That's awesome. Well, I heated the crap out of this bolt right here. I tried to get it off with a wobble and it finally rounded off. Luckily, there's only one bolt on the block. So, just a second. Put it here off the side. Of course, we're not needing to slam it or anything like that. So we got this part here opened up, but that's not going to help us uh, getting the intake off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now Honda uses a ton of these slide connectors, these slide electro connectors. You lift the tab and you're supposed to slide it off. I'm going to tell you, if there's a tip that I can give you, if you find every, every stinking one of them things and put you a little bit of WD or blow them off and put you a little bit of WD 40 on it, uh, it could potentially help you quite a bit. Uh, hoses, plugs, this thing is going to have a ton of them. I mean, I don't even, I, I'd have to go through there in my mind right now to even explain to you uh, how many uh, friggin' uh, plugs this thing's got. It's it's astronomical what they what they got on this engine. Uh, seems like, anyway. Uh, they're all old hoses. Hoses, basically. It's, it's worse. The hoses are worse. Honda loves their hoses. I mean, they got hoses going to everything. Uh, so I removed the um, intake and I did break loose the throttle body. I did do that. Uh, gives you a little bit more room. Less to mess with at one point in time. You have to unplug all your plugs on that part to get this, this moved out of the way so you can get the intake off of it. So you'll have to do that. Uh, like I said, we left 
off down there. So we haven't been down below yet to, to take the, the rest of the wires there. We got hoses here that are absolutely locked in and I don't know if they will or will not come off. Uh, these things are criminally tight on there. Uh, obviously I see a lot of hoses, but these here are excessively tight on there. They don't even, don't even want to attempt to roll. And there's no, uh, these little picks that you, that you get, uh, right there. These little picks, uh, they're made when, if you can get them in the backside and, and wiggle, uh, wiggle, 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 go all the way around with your round part of it. Uh, you normally get them apart, but these here all seem to have bosses. Uh, I don't know if, you, if the camera can pick it up, but there's a boss right there. So you can't get behind here. If you can get behind with a pick like this, you go in and you kind of go over and kind of roll this tool around. Uh, this, the sets have different versions. They have different bends. I'll try a couple of more while the camera is rolling. Stinking tight. I mean, tight, 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 tight. Good news is, I at least I'm able to get these pliers on them right now and wiggle them enough to break them, break the seal basically. Of course, gotta be careful we don't want to replace it if we don't have to. So these Nipex is the one the ones I use all the time on hoses. They're handy all the way around. Not just for hoses, obviously. Once you get the seal broken, they normally come off very easily. They probably won't know that now that I said that. All right, so there's these four. One more over here. Boy, well, two more, actually. Because I still ain't got the big one off yet. If we get, get it to loosen up, that one was easy. And there is a little bit of antifreeze left in this thing. This had a major meltdown in case you're wondering I don't know what all is smoked in it they didn't even want to go the route the route of fixing it they just said put me another engine in it and obviously that is what we're doing I got one two three six there's three one two three there's six hoses just in that area right there and then all the vacuum hoses go into the back as well. I'm gonna pause you back up. Like I said, intake, pay attention to the intake. I showed you the intake on uh, in the beginning of the video. So you know where the bolts are on that exhaust you've seen. Uh, well, yeah, there's some various fasteners now that we can take loose, uh, like the motor mounts. We can break that part loose, uh, get that apart front. Uh, we can do the, the front toward me, the rear, we can do that one. And then we'll have the front, the actual front of the motor one. So we can work on this. We can partially work on that. So these are freed up pretty good. And what's going to remain is that one right there and the one on the transmission. Let me go ahead and start clearing some of that. I'll turn the camera back on. So this little unit right here, I'm going to tell you. No, I'm going to show you. Right there, okay. So I, I did a little bit of bending on the hoses here, not enough to hurt it, of course. Um, and I was trying to break these bolts loose, but this thing here uh, is a little bit on the tight side and I'm afraid I'm gonna end up stripping something. The hoses are kind of in the way because, you know, I told you about the recovery of the system. I almost started to think, you know, I wonder if I can just move that out of the, oh, shoot. Uh, I sort of think, you know, I'm gonna move that out of the way kind of tuck it out of the way a little bit and, and see if I can get to everything, but uh, I am uh, hmm, kind of changed my mind on that. I think uh, I have a better chance of breaking loose the, the little six millimeter bolts versus the 
bolts on the pump itself. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and recover it. So the recovery process is over and done with. Let me flip the screen. So this is what we recovered. Uh, just in case I'm doing that, just in case the uh, customer questions uh, when I tell them the system wasn't charged all the way, which it isn't. I don't know right off the top of my head. I don't know what the, what the actual charge is, but uh, I'm assuming that's hovering around half of where it should be. So we're going to have to quote some seals and uh, uh, some seals and a recharge if, if they want to do that. Don't know, but anyway. Anyway, continuation. I didn't get very far yesterday since uh, I run around a lot. The uh, alternator and the pump still in it, but I did remove the, uh, the hose coming from up here. Go into the air compressor right there, plug off your line, don't forget that. Uh, I'm fixing to drop this one here, 10 millimeter uh, nut. And ladies and gentlemen, what I, what I figured out is I make myself a little bit more room. I removed the radiator, as you can see. That is giving me an ample amount of room to work here with the motor mounts and everything. Great, uh, loving it. So undo that bolt. Uh, I think I've also noticed I had I was curious yesterday if I might find a, a video on YouTube, but I was unable to find the find a video on YouTube that's pertaining to this. And normally these are pretty good engines and they don't fail, of course, overheating. There's no engine mate that can stand the run uh hot like that for a prolonged period of time. This one here did. Again, this is a New York car, <laughs> which I done found out, and everything on this thing is uh, the aluminum has got that salt corrosion on it. Not fun, as you can hear. <laughs> There's nothing about this here that is easy. Like I said, these bolts are locked in there like crazy. So that nut, I don't know, the camera probably not going to see it, but this uh, crud that you get on it from uh, the salt on the aluminum. Every now and then, I guess, we do get one of these vehicles. Matter of fact, uh, Quite some time ago, I owned a Chevy Tahoe, a 2002 Chevy Tahoe that came from up there. I had the same issues with it. God, it's got a lot of corrosion. Yeah, locked up. So, anyway, enough of that. Uh, alternator and all that good stuff is next. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Uh, pause you up for that one. Turn the camera back on when I get it done. Actually, I'll show you. Right down there, where I'm pointing, I know that's black and dirty, you can't see it, but that's the uh, tensioner. That's the bolt right there, we're going to remove it. That alternator bolt is underneath, and then of course the four bolts on the uh, compressor itself. So we'll have to remove that, and the, the body down in the bracket, that's the water pump. Figured I'd show you that real quick, because a lot of times uh, I tend to not show what I need to show. So anyway, there you go. This is your classic Honda belt tensioner. It's just a hex bolt, eight millimeter that's holding it on. You'll have to have a shallow socket or not a, don't use a thick wall socket to remove that. Use, use a standard chrome socket to be fine. Well, that'll get, that'll get this part done. That's what we're looking at. And by the way, this, uh, check out this uh, vehicle obviously did not have a pulley on it. This is completely destroyed. So that uh, was the issue. So that's destroyed. The belt came off of it. Uh, lady kept driving it, driving it, driving it, driving it, driving it. So that, that was the problem with that one. All right, momentary lapse of judgment. The AC pump stays in. Sorry. Some words under the Number one injector, there's a bolt, and there's obviously one bolt right there that you're going to be able to see from the bottom very easily. You can reach them from the top, bottom, it doesn't matter. Uh, point, point to the, uh, the point to all this is you want to be able to get the wire harness back just like that so we can pull 
uh, the engine out. Moving on to the bolts, you got your access right there to the flywheel or flex plate, not flywheel, not a clutch. Anyway, I can't feel that part, not enough room. So, somebody can comment, oh, it's bad camera work. Yep, okay. All right, yep. You do that, you make the videos for free and tell me about that again. Uh, you have to have a socket 17 to roll your engine around. This one here is flatter than a pancake. I mean the engine. Oh, that is a 19. I was wrong. Uh, I had a 19 on it. felt loose. Okay, maybe one. So this thing here is just spins as free as free can be. Uh, these are 10 millimeters and there is a lot of them on there. Uh, go to the beginning of the video and, and have a look at the engine hanging on a hoist. That'll give you the, it'll give you an idea of, of what exactly you're looking at. I'm gonna pause you up. So sooner or later somebody might ask, uh, how easy is this? Or what is the uh, hardest part? Honestly, in my opinion, and that is my opinion, like I said, the hardest part to me is getting the wiring out of the way. In, uh, in the case of this 2.4 right there versus a GM, I can probably do two of the GMs versus one of these Hondas. Of course, I'm up there in age too, so don't, don't forget that. I think that's bolt number eight right here. Yes, as you can see, not very hard to get to. Freaking wires on this thing, uh, to me, is a nightmare. That's the worst thing on this stupid Honda. Uh, but other than that, you know, it shouldn't be a big deal. It's rolling free now, so that part is uh, is completed. It's time to separate uh, engine now. I done pulled the top two bolts out again. Uh, look at look at the beginning in the video where I have the engine rotating on the hoist. So that'll give you a pretty good idea of what you're what you're looking at. Let me pause you up and try to get some of these bolts out. Uh, starting up here, down here, here, here. Uh, there should be one more underneath of there somewhere. Anyway, go ahead and get that going. Pause you up. Lower bolts are Honda. They're all the same length, so you don't have to keep up with that. Just remember that you took them out of the lower part of it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I lied to you. Pull your inspection cover. <laughs> Much easier to get the bolts. All right, so here's your folks, a little bit of an update. Eight bolts here on the flywheel. Forgot one plug, and that one plug is over here on the uh, cam position sensor, or it's an actuator, whatever it is. And yes, that is an actuator. <coughs> um, anyway, so I got to exchange this sensor and we're going to save the other sensors. We're going to pull them out. Uh, salvage Yard don't care. They want to core back these days, but they don't care as far as uh, uh, the sensors and all that good stuff concerned. You know, they don't, they don't worry about that too much. Uh, basically, what they're after is the material. <clears throat> so I'm probably going to also pull the high-pressure fuel pump uh, just as a little extra. You know, I'm going to pull these, these injectors. There's probably nothing wrong with that. Uh, we want to do some of that before uh, I get into, yeah, before I get into putting it back together. Oh, motor mount. This motor mount here is supposed to stay in it, but I was unable to break the bolts loose. These are pretty rotted. The motor mount, you can see it right there. Uh, these bolts, I had, a, I had the hardest time. I could get the one, uh, but the other ones, you see the heads, they're all rusted. He said, I was able to snap the one loose, but the other ones started flexing on me, and I thought, you know what? Uh, I don't want to pop. I don't want a ratchet to pop or something like that because it's going to end up uh, uh, making me mad because it's going to snap my wrist or something like that. I uh, found the motor mount. It's smoked. No, I did not forget to, to undo it. This, this is smoked. It's been like that for quite some time. Uh, you can tell by the time, uh, or not by the time, you can tell when the... Uh, when the rubber gets kind of molten in there, it kind of looks like it's molten, that's been rubbing in there for a while. So anyway, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and do some of that stuff. All right, so uh, some, I'm gonna make you aware of something that some people might not know. Uh, you are going to have to, uh, more than likely, you are going to have to switch 
some parts. So you may need some gaskets, some O-rings. Uh, for instance, there was a sensor on top uh, that I had to replace, that I had to pull off of this engine, put it on the next one. So when you're allowing for time, you're doing it professionally, you want to keep that in mind. Uh, there is some, some odd and end stuff, you know, brackets that might be broken, uh, uh, hoses that might be broken that have to be switched over. Uh, keep that in mind. The, the, the engines uh, that they sell, they don't guarantee sensors and hoses and all that good stuff to be intact. Uh, they're selling basically only the main, the main engine part. Uh, that does include injectors, of course, you know, the, these cannot be damaged uh, or they'll give you another one, but like loose stuff, sensors and uh, all that good stuff that might be around it is not guaranteed. You know, it's not guaranteed that they're on there or whatever. So like your alternator, the AC pump, that will have to be exchanged anymore. Uh, they'll pull them off back in the day. They left them on there, but they don't do it anymore because every little bit that they can squeeze out of it, they're going to squeeze out of it. Anyway, just saying. All right, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. All of the usable items, sensors and injectors, the uh, high-pressure pump up here, uh, crankshaft position sensors, uh, two camshaft position sensors, and I think I told you earlier, the plug that I had forgotten is actually the uh, solenoid valve. Uh, so all of this stuff is put out, but I'm going to tell you one thing that you need to make sure that you do. I'm not hybrid on the subject. I know I sometimes get hung up on things, but uh, we're not going to do that here. But I'm going to tell you about this. Um, anyway, when you're taking sh uh, the, the stuff off, the usable stuff off of the engine, uh, stuff that's on the other engine, make sure you don't get that, uh, that stuff mixed up uh, as far as, you know, your bolts, your hardware, basically. So if, if you're like me, I look at, uh, I have specific spots where I put hardware, and that's how I know uh, if I'm... Uh, possibly having a bolt left over or, or you know worst case scenario you don't have enough of them that seems to be the problem that I always run into but anyway uh... all right update time I wire wheeled all the pulleys a little spot right there that I couldn't get to with a wire brush and then want to roll the engine uh, the customer did go ahead give me the go ahead uh, purchasing the new motor mount so I put it on we're gonna put the or we did put the belt on all of this is tight, good to go, so I don't have to mess with this inside the car. Uh, it's the same, same difference as far as the uh, uh, turning the engine is concerned. Uh, don't have no oil in it yet, and they just drained the oil. I verified that on the dipstick. There was a little bit something left in it, so we can roll it safely. Not a problem at all. I made sure that all our, uh, all our wires, are, are, all the plugs that they cut are off now, so we should be good on that. As I said, the alternator is back on. <clears throat> um, hoses. There's one more plug back here. So one plug back here. That one right there that needed to come off. And, and, and that should be it. This is ready to go back down. I hung it as, as straight as I can hang it. That's about as good as it's going to get, guys. I'm more worried about the customer's car than what I am the video. This back corner here on top and the lower the lower bolt on this corner down here so 17 mil now what I'm gonna do is go in there with my power ratchet and carefully persuade it to hop up on the dowel pin that's the wrong way of persuasion All right, so she's starting to get tight a little bit. And this is the part where we need to use caution.
There's no pressure on it. Keep in mind, there's a swivel. That swivel is kind of going sideways on it. I'm not forcing it yet. Now, right now, the whole assembly is, is shaking. So, I'm working on the front mount. Oh, uh, that ain't gonna work out yet. We're not quite pulled in the backside. Uh, you still got a little bit of gap in the backside. I'm gonna open the front just a tiny little bit. If I can, just a little bit like that. I can tell you this, the dowels on this thing was super duper tight. Uh, one of them was stuck, I had to beat it out. So at this point in time, that thing is pulled back together. As for the engine mount, not looking so hot. The angle on it is a little off. Okay, let me pause you up for just a second and see if I can get the bolt started. 